still a city, still so far from home. I've searched for you all my life. Cast out like a shadow, racing towards the light. I pray to see you one more time. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my show. Uh, a little bit different tonight, as you may see. I'm doing two issues, Terminator and Spitfire, which has cost me more work because, as you can see, I had to re-edit the intro. <laughs> but um, I will... Oh, my camera's playing around. So I will... Um, I'll explain more in a minute. But first, I need to introduce my, my guests. Um, so, first of all, I have Mark's Mods. Yep. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to Harlux's show. Uh, yeah, uh, I think Dave said I can come out from behind the sofa now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, Jordy Dave. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another show. Hope you enjoy it tonight. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. And that's our guest for now. So, um, oh, let me see what I'm doing. What am I doing? There we go. Um, yeah, so bit of a change to the channel now so not too bad because i've only got a very limited number of issues left to do because i've i've got on and carried on with it all i haven't got many issues left at all so i haven't got enough content to do you know two three issues a, a week anymore um so the plan is the other worry I had was that some of these issues are going to be really quick. So I didn't want to come on air and go, hi, do the build. Ten minutes later, we're done. So, and it's really annoying. I need to change this. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I've decided to do like tonight. I'm going to do a, a dual show. So we're going to do one issue with the Terminator. And then halfway through, we'll switch over. And then we'll do the issue of the Terminator. I mean, the Spitfire. Yeah. So... Um, Going forward, I mean, I, I wasn't going to stream tomorrow anyway because I've got um, something to do. I'm, I'm not going to be home. Um, so from next week, it'll be Friday at 7. That's going to be my main time, um, and that'll be it going forward uh, until something else may pop up. You know, I'm, I mean, I've, there's more. I'm waiting for another build to do. We're, we're really close to finishing the Terminator, really close. So I'm going to need to fill my time with something else. But I'm still debating, and I know people are chucking ideas at me. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, so that's it. So from next week, it'll be every Friday, unfortunately. So you've only got me once a week. Um, yeah, but doing that, Harlix, has enabled something else to happen. Yeah. It's worked out really well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, by going just on a Friday, it's enabled something else to happen, which has worked out really well for them. Yes, yes. And uh, and myself, to be honest. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that's, that's the update, really, at the moment. So, um, yeah, let's uh, go through a bit of chat. And um, I suppose we better have a look at doing some Terminator. Okay, well, we'll start the chat off, and the call goes to Silver Adrian. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi Adrian. Andrew. And Silver goes to Dano Build. Hello, everybody. Double Build today. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Dano. Then um, Bronze goes to Warren James. Hi, all, and good luck with your build, Paulix. Lovely. Thanks, Warren. Hi, yeah. And D Harris, evening. How are we all tonight? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Hi, D. Yeah, good. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, Yorkshire Crafter, hi, everyone. Hi, Julie. Hi, love. D. Harris, this is T. 
to Dano Pills is a way you can get me an exact measurement to the millimetre on one of the wing panels where or somewhere you'll be placing a decal so I can get get these printed for you. PC scale converter not working. I'll have a look at myself and see if I've got a, a scale converter on my iPad. Might be to help you there. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Dave Mack, good evening, everyone. Good luck with your build tonight, Olix. Hi, Dave. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Um, Don't know his build. Dick Harris Walker will get my dad to help me with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, da Danielle Boudreau. 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 Sorry, I didn't pronounce your name right. Hello from across the pond. Hi, Danielle. And uh, D. Harris, Charles, Jody, Dave. Okay, and uh, there is some more, actually. I don't know if you jumped some. Did I? Uh, we've got... Oh, Dave, uh, good I, evening. I must have jumped some. Uh, uh, next one. Fleetwood, Fleetwood G. Yeah. Ah, Fleetwood G. Uh, good evening and all hope everyone is okay and good luck with your bill, Lovely, thank you. Hi, Fleetwood. Uh, DS Models and Vintage. Hi, everyone. Looking forward to the show tonight. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, DS Models and, vin and Vintage. Um, was that it? I think so. Oh, uh, no, the next one as well. Um. Donald Bruce, thanks also a pick if possible on the area you are taking measurements from. And uh, Dave Mack, good evening, sir. And Dave Mack, good evening, D. Harris. <laughs> D. Harris, Fleetwood Jail, good evening <laughs> to you. Yeah, Dave, yeah. And uh, that's it then. Okay, lovely. Most, you know, most of us have just jumped down quick. Yeah, no, it does that sometimes. Mm. Well, what's a show without a few technical hitches, eh? Mm. So, yeah, let's um, have a look at Terminator 113. So I believe, uh, Jordy, you're going to be doing the Terminator for me, issue? Oh. No, I'm oh. doing the Terminator. Oh, you're doing the Terminator. Right, sorry. Well, this week I'm helping with this bit for you. See so, that, that way, Hollix, you get somebody who's actually building it, reading it out. Well, right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's. Uh, oh, I think I can guess what this might be. Oh, I'm so unorganised today, actually, guys, because I haven't even got the thing over. I think we're going to need that. So let me just grab. Rob got his part, the deer, that piece is a bit like homework, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, the uh, metal plate that comes is heavy. So if there's going to be four of them, it is going to be heavy. It's, oh, not, it's actually four wooden plates and then a metal plate for the stand. Mm. Not light though. In fact, yeah, my case day in a bag this size. Oh, he picked his up from the shop, so yeah, it's a nice big bag. Yeah, that's that's the size of bag it comes in. So, okay, okay. right. Oh. 113, add another base section along with details. This issue, you'll be attaching the fourth base section with an additional rusted metal parts and a rock. Okay. Ooh. So, let me open this up and then we'll, uh, we can go through some parts checks. Oh, there's a lot of parts in this one. Okay, then. Okay, so, um, list of pieces. Part one is fourth base section. 
do, do. There we go. Okay. Part two is rock detail. I need to open. Sorry about the rustling packets. Everything is individually bagged. So this is the rock detail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Part three is mechanical detail. Ooh. It looks like a side of an engine or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, part four is two springs. Oh, yes. I'm a bit nervous about these. Oh, they're yeah. stuck together. There we go. Okay. Two springs. Part five is mechanical detail. That looks like a, like a bearing. Yeah, yeah. Thinking that, some sort of bearing. It's probably one of oh. No, it's the wrong scale, really. I was saying it could be something to do with the engine, but yeah, yeah a bit strange. Okay. Uh, part six is two connectors. Yep. Okay. And then part seven is nine PWB two times four millimeter screws, one spare. One spare, yeah. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, any chat, Jordan, Dev? Yeah. Uh, you've marked a heavy stand for a heavy Terminator. Yeah. And Dave Bassett, good evening, Holix, Mark's Mods, Jody Dave, and everyone watching the build. Oh, Lovely. hi, David. Hi, Dave. David, it thank you. It also says you will need a fine crosshead screwdriver, super glue, and cocktail stick, the base section assembly from issue 112 and the red searchlight with tape from issue 111. Oh yeah that's my searchlight that we've labeled up red. Okay. Blue cocktail stick, screwdriver, I'm ready to go. Right step one check the fit of the base section in the corner between parts 110-1 and 112-1. Remove the skull and carefully turn the base over, taking care not to damage any of the detail. Okay. Well, I've just had a little idea as well, which I'll uh, go into in a minute when we've done this. So, right, uh, I'm going to try and prop that up carefully. Oh, it's going to be really difficult to try and get this on stream... There we go. Oh, just move the screws. Okay. Okay. So you need to position your base section in. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. Right. You might want to put a clamp on yes. to hold it in place while you do the next part. So I'm going to put a couple on. One there. One just in there. Uh, I'll put another one over here. Okay. Okay. Step two. Position the connector of the raised screw sockets on parts 110-1 and 113-1. You may find it helpful to hold the base sections in place using bulldog clips or similar. Mm -hmm. So the first thing it's asking you to do is on the left with this, where the skull is. Down this one. Yes. Or where the skull would yeah. be. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to push that into place. Okay. Okay. 
This one isn't a very nice fit. Let me try the other one. Ah, better. Okay. Okay. Step three. <laughs> Fix the connector in place using four PWB two times four millimeter screws. All right, let me positioning over this way a bit so I can. Uh... That's one. Two. Yeah, and as I say, I had a bit of an idea. I don't know how effective it'll be, but I'll, um, I will enlighten everyone afterwards. Okay. Okay, so that is one bracket on and secure. Okay. Step four is fit the second connector in place of the raised screw socket in parts 113.1 and 112.1. Um. Okay, that's a good fit. Now, for some reason, that one didn't want to fit on this one. But as far as I'm aware, they're exactly the same. So, yeah. a bit strange, but... Uh right so step five is fix the connector in place using four pwb two times four millimeter screws He's turned quite a bit. Two. Ooh, it's warm. It's really warm tonight down here. It's really mm. Okay, that is the last screw going in, and I have one left over, so. There we go. So that is that one in place. Okay. So just before we go on, my idea. Obviously, I know the middle here is a little bit wonky or saggy. And I know it's going to harden up later, but I've just had this fantastic idea that I might use some of this electrical tape just to tape over the seams. You had me at electrical tape. Adam? You had me at electrical tape. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is just to keep that a bit more secure, I don't know how effective it will be, but I'm just taping the middle together because it's not going to cause an issue or anything. Um, I mean, it just might help secure that a bit better perhaps it might not I just I think it might hmm. I'm not sure actually if it will it might not be strong enough I know some people have 
I think I've seen some people gluing this, but I don't want to be too hasty. No. Okay, so it's obviously not going to hold it like you know solidly, but that's certainly a lot. And it seems to be a lot better. Okay. Um, I'm just cutting some more, just to do. There. Just anywhere that's got big, big. Um, Areas that I can, I can do that. Do, do read, uh, read out that bit of chat, uh, Johnny Dev. Yeah, it's just the one that's coming in now. Now, uh, P forty F twenty. Hi ho, Spiffy, Spiffy. Sorry to be late. Trust the Eagle Squadron is in the thick of the fight. Of the fight. Yeah, hi. Uh, I can read. Okay, that's nice and neat. That's just just giving it a little bit more security on those middle parts. Okay. Okay. Right. So step six is carefully turn the base the right way up and replace the skull. I wouldn't replace the skull. No, that's a way. Yeah. I identify the recesses on the parts and where the mechanical detail uh, 133 and 113 five fit circled. Check the fit of the mechanical details and apply super glue to the shape parts of the mechanical details that fit into the recesses. Okay, goodness, lovely. Goodness me, why don't you just say just glue them in? <laughs> yeah. So this match is like a giant jigsaw puzzle, really. So that will go in there like so. That's a good fit. Um, and then this one will go down there, which you can't see. So that is that one. So I'm going to get some glue and glue it in. And I'm going to use, try and get rid of this uh, brush and nozzle glue. Right. And it just says, step seven, it says, fix the mechanical details in place. Okay. Pick up the chart. Um, uh, Crafty Chris. Hi, everyone. Hi, Chris. On this beautiful night. Hi, Crafty Chris. And Lee Harris. Only temporary fixed teeth. Only time it's fixed, but tape might release from the plastic due to the release agent molding the base. Yeah, it might do. Um, uh, uh, Crafty Chris, hi, Daniel. Lovely to see you here tonight. Well, that hasn't gone too well. I need some more glue on that. <laughs> yeah, this glue is horrendous, isn't it? It's like really stringy. Yeah. I know P40 did warn. It was all right when it was new. Now it's just like... Just really... Sticky. It means it's going off. Yeah, that didn't even just didn't even. You might just have to give it a bit more time, Harlex. Yeah, I just noticed that there's more at the bottom than the sides, and um, so I'm just going to go around the sides of this part. Okay. Okay. Right, so step seven is uh, uh, we've done that. Fix the mechanical details in place. And right, step eight: identify the recess in the base where the rock detail fits. Circle. So check how the rock detail fits slightly on top of the part. Apply glue to the shape part of the rock that fits in the recess. Fix the rock detail in place. Okay, yeah, that's quite a good fit. And I'm going to forget that other glue, I think, because that's still, uh, it does, hasn't done anything. Yeah. Might be all right when it dries, but. 
I'm just going to give it some good grow. I just wanted to use it up, you know? Yeah. The trouble is with the plastic, it's like an ABS plastic I think we're using. Yeah, you should try your ABS glue with that, Mark. Mm. Yeah, see, that's fixed straight away with that glue. I can lift the base up. Yeah. That one seems to be holding for now. So you that's know what? Cool. I, th I think I have problems with mine, it not sticking properly. I think this might just go in the bin. Yeah. As well. But anyway, cool. So that is the rocking place. Okay. Right, step nine. This is where it gets fun. Identify the recesses circled for the first spring on the base panel near the jawbone. Fix it in place using a little super glue. The inset shows the spring in place. Um, I'll pick up some chat. Um... Uh, Danielle Budwa. Hi, hi, Chris. How are you, honey? Uh, Crafty Chris. I'm fine, thank you, Danielle. And D. Harris. Why not make the additional pieces added onto the top of the base so that they cross the four panels so they still reinforce the base? Yeah, true. Should have done. Could have done that, couldn't it? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, this is not wanting to sit quite right. Well, if you didn't, this one's bad. Wait till the next one. I mean, I don't know whether I should squeeze it or rotate or... You know what? I just put some glue on it and just held it in place uh, for a little bit. I can see them two the things going to pop off all the time. And now they're going to spring off everywhere, aren't they? I'm just trying to get it to at least sit in all the grooves. I mean, it nearly is. We have to turn the spring. Uh, I think that looks like a good fit there. And it's just a case of putting this... Well, I think I'm just going to have to... There's too much spring for the amount of grooves you've got. That's what it is. Right, I'm going to, uh, yeah, just do that, I think. I'm just going to apply some glue. The problem is... Touch you that with glue is going to go by your This glue goes cloudy, doesn't it? Mm. I think what I did was I actually applied the glue to the spring. Yeah. Yeah, I think if he touches that spring with glue, it's going to do a zebedee and just go by. <laughs> But I did say it might spring off everywhere. <laughs> right, done. Put glue on the spring. I'm going to hold that in place for a minute. Oh, it's stuck already. Okay, right, let's hope that glow, that, it's got quite a nice bit of glue on there, so let's just see how that goes. Okay. Okay. So, step 10. The second spring fits across the joint between the base sections and beside the skull. Use a little glue to hold the spring in place. Okay, so I have put the skull in place just so I can see for reference. Yeah, I did that. 
So, I can see a little mark there. So, I'm guessing it's just going to go in something like that. Yeah, more or less. Maybe further back. God, it doesn't really make it clear, does it? Nope. <laughs> and then it, I think it's about there, but I don't want to see get in the way of the, lifting the skull up. <sighs> so it wants to it wants to sit more like that, to be honest, but. That's what it really matters, does it? Sorry, you can't even see. Well, it fits. The, the magazine shows it sort of like that, but it wants to sit better. Like that. Well, in the real world, it probably bounce out of the place. I think uh, wherever you think it looks good, just put it in wherever Harlex costs. I mean, mine is, I don't you know if mine's right, to tell you the truth, so I just put mine in, and if it's its individual to me. Yeah. Well, in the real world, it would move in anyway. Oh, yeah, that looks all right. So I think for this, I'm actually going to try and attack this with a cocktail stick. No, I'm not. I need to... Glue the spring. Put glue on the spring. Yeah, from that one. Don't want to go any more than that one. <laughs> now there's supposed to be springs of the core. The terminator must be massive. Yeah, the, the uh, Terminator must be uh, stood on um, an old quick fit. No, but the thing is, to scale, the car mm. spring is pretty big. When you look yeah. at that spring, the Terminator, it's out of scale. If the Terminator is supposed to be the size of an ordinary human, they have, if they're, and they're supposed to be springs off a the car, they're out of scale. Mm. Unless, unless he's just stood on a radio control call and smashed out in this. Right. That's in place, yeah. Okay. Stacked 11, he just says that this shows the two springs in place, but we're not sharing instructions. And then step 12 is tape the LED with the red light with tape near the connector from issue 111. Thread the connector and cable through the hole in base section push the stand of the searchlight into the hole ribs on the inside of the hole fits into the slots in the stand once in place the searchlight can be angled and twisted slightly no that's not gonna work i was hoping to get this in without undoing the Okay. Just tying up the wires. There we go. Okay, and that is stage complete. The fourth section of the base has been fixed in place and details have been added. Oh, amazing. And then... Yeah, that 
Yeah, go on. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, that's certainly got a bit more weight to it now. And um, the middle doesn't seem to be moving as much at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And then in next week's issue, you fit the main circuit board to the base. Cool. So I'm going to take this back off. Lovely. And then I'm going to um, let's pat this, put this away for the moment so let all those bits dry. That took a while, actually, because it's like 20 to 8. Yeah, I, know, I was thinking that. It was quite a lot of, uh, lot of steps to that. So, yeah, quite surprised. That's good. Um... Yes, lovely. So that was the Terminator uh, 113. So let's just go back to uh, this view just for a minute while I set up. So I need to change um, change it to Spitfire mode. So hello all, welcome to Spitfire. Tonight we're going to be in issue 67. <laughs> so yeah, no. Right. Uh, P40F20, doing great work, squadron leader. Lovely. Thank you, P40. And I will be handing a chat over to Mark. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to be doing uh, Spitfire 64. Ooh, and um, let me just move this. Oh, god, I just dropped that thing. Um, what was I gonna say? I was just gonna say something then, but I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, so what was that? Hang on, so sorry, Terminator 113. So we've got another six issues till completion. Uh, that has actually gone really quick. That build seven, set or oh, seven, yeah. Sorry, I can't add up. Yeah, seven. So yeah, no, it's um, it's been really good. So uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then I do have a little um, surprise for you all before we get going. So I have got. Um, Another guest to, to join us this evening, um, which I'm really grateful for. Um, and it's, uh, I'm pleased to announce we have John's model making. Hello, John. Good evening, all. How are we all? Oh, nice to see you. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, no problem, just uh, adjust my camera though because it was pointing to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How's it gone all right tonight? All right. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're just about to start the, the Spitfire. And um, yeah, so um, anyone who I'm sure I'm sure you may be aware, but anyone who doesn't know, this is John's model making. And um, yeah, he's got uh, Evening all. And, Evening, uh, Mark. Evening, Evening, John. Today. So yeah. Um, there we go. There we, we'll, we'll come back to you in a moment. And uh, cause I'm dying to know. Thanks for asking me to come on, on anyway. Pardon? Thanks for asking me to come on. No, no, you're welcome. And um, yeah, it's really nice to, to have you here. And uh, yeah, nice to actually talk to you. So, mm. hello. I'm uh, talking to John all the time. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. He talks to me more than wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, no, uh, we'll uh, come back to John uh, after the build and, um, yeah, we'll see what he's been up to and, and what, what he's up to. So, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's get on with uh, 64 and get this bit done. It looks like it's going to be a really quick issue tonight, actually. Yeah. You don't know what I'm going to hear, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, right. fuselage panel for the underside. Okay, lovely. Well, it's checklist. 64-1. Fuselage panel for the underside of the model. So, sorry, I was a bit unprepared there for the excitement of having a new guest. <laughs> so, uh, right, 
Oh god, these packets. Okay, so 6401. Yeah, use a large panel for the underside of the model, and this is uh, metal. Uh, 642 support bracket. Well, <laughs> metal as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be painting my silver. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're painting. They use what? What color should it be? That uh, silver. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sixty-four-three. Five PM two by three millimeter screws, one spare. Okay. Uh, just a little bit of chat uh, that's come in. We've got P forty F twenty. Chain home reports. Jerry Cabbage creates inbound. Your sector. Angels twelve. <laughs> Um, we've got Dave Mark. Hi, uh, John's model making. Oh, lovely. Right, a lot of googly googly readle to you. Much for section one. Right, you need your plane, Alex. Okay, oh, this looks interesting. How are we going to do this then, eh? Oh. I'm going to hang off the side of the table or something. A lot of waffling just to just to check the fit. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you can see that just about. It's getting really tight on this desk to even do anything with. Okay. Okay. Number one. Check the fit of the fuselage panel 641 on the underside of the model. Four rear screws, sockets on parts 641, along with screw holes in the fuselage frames, 5901, blue circle, 6001, yellow circle, and 6302, red circle. Yeah, I can see how that fits. There's just a raised, uh, so you can't see, there's raised sockets, and they do fit nicely. So I was a bit concerned last week that this was spayed out a bit, but yeah. actually, this does all click in nicely so yeah i'm happy all the screw holes line up well there is fixed part 64 one in place using the four pm two by three millimeter screws okay so there's one I'm glad to get this end bit screwed in too. Yeah, lovely. These are going in really nicely. There's uh, all lined up perfectly. Not had to use any three in one oil on this model. No, no, I noticed that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, especially, oh, the DeLorean was the worst for that. You had to yeah. really use, use loads on that and the quality of the parts for the Spitfire is second to none. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. I've not had an issue. The only issue I've had with this build is the motor in issue two, uh, which was struggling and then started smoking. So I don't know what was up with that. But, you know, apart, apart from that, I've had no problem with anything else. Well, okay. So, that's completed work. A fuselage panel has been fitted to the underside of the model. The bracket 642 right will be fitted in a future issue. There we go. So that's it in place. That was a quick issue. Oh, and that and that's it. That's it. The bracket will be fitted in a future issue. Oh. So I've noticed that. There is quite a, a big hole. Um, yeah, I wonder how much that space would have for that. Doesn't look quite. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's opened for that, but it does look a bit open. But yeah, that is um, that's um, that's that then. Wow, mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, was a nice quick issue. Just a little bit of chat then. Uh, David Bassett says, "Scramble, scramble, scramble." And P40F20 says all the screw holes in metal are pre tapped. Excuse me, one sec. And P40F20 says uh, nicely done, Squiffy. 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mute for a second. If I didn't mute, I would have turned more. Oh, <laughs> don't be sad. No, it wouldn't actually because I've got my headphones in. Oh. It would be if I asked mine to do something. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. No. So, um, right. So, John, tell us how how, are you, how have you been and what have you been up to and you know I don't know. I don't know what's yeah, going on. Uh, everything's everything's fine, you know. I want to. I've done the Spitfire like yourselves. Uh, on issue, uh, is it sixty six? Uh, I think we're up to. You know, where you put the bracket in the two mortars in. It's looking. Let me see if I can. I've got mine here. It's just same as everybody else he's got to this stage, I suppose. There we go. There she is. She's a little beauty. I heard what Mark said about the quality of parts, and you've got to agree with him. You know, I've got to. I've got to say, for value for money, yeah, I would say the Spitfire's up there. Yeah, it's like the Root Master, isn't it? Well, that was that was brilliant value for money. Um, mm. You know, the, the amount of metal. It's no wonder you can't get it. They probably made a loss on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Spitfire is uh, going exactly the same. And it's the same with the, with the magazines. Um, I love reading the magazines, you know, all the stories and the individual stories and of the uh, the pilots and the squadrons and everything. That makes fascinating reading, just like the route master did. But uh, the spare is great. I'm expecting delivery of um, the next four, but they'll probably come next week. Um, yeah, probably. I think, I think I've got the XO one coming tomorrow, so that'll be good. You usually get dispatched after the fifth, don't they? Well, the um, Spitfire. Right. Um, it was odd, really, because it, it was, was it 25th? They were dispatched last Friday because I mailed them. <laughs> Try and get them as quick as possible. But they usually take a fortnight to arrive, you know. Mm. And I think the XO one was paid over, over two weeks back. So that is, mm. and people said again that now. So I, I should get that tomorrow, if not, probably Saturday. But a um, bit busy next week, so there's not going to be any videos out next week. Um, no. I'm looking forward to getting the uh, Spitfire ones, because I know there's another mortar here. Um, I'm not exactly sure about all three, what they all do, but I know yeah. there's the rudder and the elevators on the same yeah, section. Yeah, there's on there, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. That middle one, I don't know. I, I think... Mm -hmm. Two outside yeah. ones will probably be the elevators and the rudder. It's that middle one, I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I can't I can't see them having individual motors, but they have done for the flaps, haven't they? So, uh, but anyway, we'll wait and see, won't we? It'd be good when it comes, won't it? Really? Mm. It'd be great if we get the wings on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that That's that, what... that that can. Well, I don't say it concerns me really, but you have a look at the the wings, and you can see fixing points. But they look like push fit, you know. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you like how you thought they might attach. I mean, I'm guessing. I mean, it obviously you don't really want screw holes in the top, so I doubt that. No. But I don't mm. really want to glue it in either because if we have to get back in there for any reason or to replace any of like that cable that operates these um, the flaps here, yeah, you know if that breaks. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, because like my DeLorean, um, I think a lot of people had, a pro had problems with that with the circuit board, and sometimes just have it tap mine and headlights will go off and they tap it again and come back on. You know, yeah, I, I had I'm that not, with mine. I'm not going to strip it down, <laughs> no, I'll tap it, it works out, it. Leave it. You know. because obviously, some people were recommending to hot glue the plug on for the switches, and I didn't see that. Um, and then I'd already glued it all together. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the other day it wouldn't come on. It just would not come on. I was yeah. like, oh, what's wrong with it? So <clears throat> luckily underneath the front, there's six or six screws. You can undo a panel and you can just about see the wiring. Um, right. So I've got a screwdriver up there and just knock the plug and then it all started working again. Right. So right. It's too late now. Um, and the other thing with that, I don't know if you found the same, 
you've done all that engine and you're supposed to have a panel that comes up so you can see the engine. I can't get into mine anymore because uh, of the top. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to you've got to take all the uh, uh um pipes well, the Mr. Pipes. Fusion off and everything, haven't you? I think it's a couple of pipes and then obviously um there's a couple of leads and all that's supposed to slide off. And then you're supposed to be able to see the engine underneath if you left the flap up. Yeah. You're not you're not, you're not gonna do it, are you though? You know, it's like you know X Wing, you know, he's got a lot of detail on the actual on some of the paneling, and then it just gets covered with you know, it looks yeah. great all that all that detail, but then you put a cover over it and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So but you well, know I it's there. Think, I think I'm not sure if I glued my pipes in or not. Did they ask us to glue them in? Maybe they didn't. Yeah, no. you, glue, you, you, can, you can you can pull them panels down, but the trouble is it's the exhaust gets in the way. Hmm. Yeah. Right. When you try to bring them down. Hmm. Oh yeah, you mean the vents. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got to you've got to detach the bottom parts of the vents, haven't you, as well? Um, yeah. just to take them off. But yeah, the two parts that go in the back, they pull out. Um I'm sure there's a couple of leads, but I think I did it once, and I and I thought, well, I, I'm not going to be doing this again, you know. So no. I did the power mod on it, and then I switch it on. It fires up great, and I leave it for about 15 minutes while it's flashing and dancing away, and it looks great, you know. But yeah, it, it's rare that I do that, you know. Um, it's, it's, different, it's, it's different to me because I'm modding the heck out of mine, but I can do it as I go along. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I think you got quite lucky, really, because you're doing it a lot later on. When I was doing mine, they'd only just started doing the mods, uh, like mm. the uh, the flux and the uh, Christmas tree, um, mm -hmm. and they were cheaper as well. <laughs> by about, well, not but not by a great deal, but they were cheaper at the time. Um, so that was, that was the only advantage, really. But then I had to, uh, I think I'd gone past about 20 issues uh, so I undo it a little bit, but put it all back in, you know. And then when it came to the, uh, what is it, the EL light mod, there was no way I was going to start doing that again, you know. I, I did change some of the actual fiber optic to make it that little bit brighter. But, you know, it is what it is now, so. But it looks good. I mean, I love it. It's just a little bit delicate. <laughs> You see, like, I'm lucky with mine because I'm watching videos and seeing the problems people had when they were building it, what well, I would say building it live, so when it first come out. Yeah. So certain screws breaking and goodness knows what, like that, yeah. I can look ahead and go, right, I need to keep an eye on that one or, you know, some other. So I'm looking that way, but you kind of know what's coming, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like yeah. with Spitfire, you've got no idea what's going to be the next four issues. No, I know that. That's uh, yeah, because we all like the surprises, don't we? Mm. We know we've got another label on the, on the cable. You know, mm. that's it. it must be the last one. <laughs> it's <gotta> be. <laughs> that's, uh, so you're you doing. Uh, sorry, 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 so you're doing the Ecto One as well. Yeah. Um, and then, have you got any other builds on the go? Is it just that one at the moment? The Spitfire? No, no, I've got the uh, I've got the Iron Man as well. Um, he's all in bits at the moment. It looks like he's been blown up actually, but he's no legs or body yet. Um, he's got a partial arm. There we go. I'm only up to issue twenty two, same as anybody everybody else in the UK. Uh, but I've, I've just seen earlier today. Well, the next four issues are. And it's a bit of a, it's a bit annoying, really, because I think in the third issue, we got the right hand, and it was the complete hand. Um, and you had to put the fingers together. And so so you, you got the complete hand. <clears throat> you had to put the thumb and the fingers together, uh, which were fine, all in one issue. But for the left hand, they split it up into about three issues. So you get you get a thumb uh, and a finger and a couple of other fingers and then another issue you get another finger and part of the hand and everything you know which is which uh, is a bit uh, I think it's a bit naughty really that considering you got the full hand on the uh, for the right hand but that's coming along nice anyway I actually put a a video out uh, earlier today that I completed yesterday uh, for issue twenty two. 
But um, just like anything, it's a bit repetitive simply because you got left and right hand, right leg, left leg. You know. So, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I did the. I, I did the heads because that was all in issue yeah. one. Uh, yeah. And that's as far as I went with it. Um, <laughs> well, that looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I thought that'd be a nice little thing on the side, and I have got some more issues actually. I think they sent me, they sent me pack two by mistake. Um, right. and I found them and said, "Oh no, no, I don't want it anymore. You were supposed to have cancelled it." And um, she was uh, sorry. The uh, so that yeah, no, sorry. The lady said, um, "Oh, I'm really sorry about that." And she gave me a refund. And I said, "Oh, where do you want to send these back?" She said, "No, I don't worry about it." So I've got some more issues under the bed, but. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I got my Iron Man cap anyway. Oh, nice. Where is stupid in caps? There you go. Do you wear it when you're doing the build? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a t-shirt, but I'm certainly not wearing a hat. I've got, I've got one for the R2D2 and the X01, and I've never worn mine. Never. It's really funny, actually, because I was going back from my old YouTube videos back in the day. Um, and obviously, I, when I did the the, um, the the R2D2 behind me there, and one, oh, yeah. I, think the, I watched the final again. I, I don't know why I was looking for something, and I had the hat on and these big earphones. I looked ridiculous, and I was like, "What? <laughs> why am I wearing this?" <laughs> no one told me I looked ridiculous at the time. <laughs> I would have, uh, yeah, would have taken it off. Well, luckily, I got to what I looked ridiculous decades ago, so I never wore them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, oh, got, yeah. I've got one or two others somewhere, but oh yeah, that we got one for the X or whatever. Sorry, you were, you, you were, yeah, you were. I got work. Camp on a team when I got to work. I'm always, I'm, I'm about only time I haven't got me camp on is when I'm in hoops. <laughs> See, they, 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 they fact, they're great for some people, but for other people, they just make us look like right books. So, you know, no, <laughs> that's, no. Why lost, that's why I'm losing the hair because I'm wearing cap all the time. <laughs> yeah, you've got, to, you've got to wear a hat, especially if it's sunshine outside because you'll burn your head. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, have I, haven't, the... I haven't gone that way yet. <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm recessing yeah. quite a lot. I've got massive recess. But I've, that, the whole family have got that, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. Like, I'm, grey, I'm grey, like 35 and I'm grey. Yeah, you're like, you're like the oldest son, he's 35 and he's gone grey. I went grey when I was about 35. Started getting grey speckles in the hair. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just totally white. <laughs> mm. So, John, what, what inspired you to do YouTube then? Um... I, I don't know. I just, I think because of lockdown, um, I had a lot more time on my hands. Um, and I just thought, well, I'll do a video um, and see how it goes. And then I did have plans on doing the Iron Man with the wife, but we had so many issues in getting them. Uh, we got the first pack, uh, the first two issues we did together. And then I didn't receive the third pack um well issues three to six about three months something like that uh so we scrapped that idea uh so i'm just doing it on my own but uh that was the initial plan was me and the me and the wife to do something together uh so i started off i think per, i think I, I did um one of my earthix models um i did the mosquito absolutely I was just going to ask I did a couple of, i did a couple of mods as well i think on the, on I was going to ask you, were you into uh, plastic modeling before you got into the sport work stuff? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. years ago. When I was a lad, when I was a teenager, you used to do some models. I, mean, I started with my lad, 10 year old, a little plastic kid, only 50 pence at the shop. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. You used to get them in comics as well. I used to collect the Warlord comics. Oh, oh, that was a Warlord fan. Yeah, yeah. You used to have, I think I've got a t shirt of that somewhere. Um, he used to get a little snap together. Uh, plastic planes, yeah. you know, um, and that were great. And I think I was then about 13, 14 when that came out. So then just went on to doing aircraft and you know, other things as well. And then obviously, as I got older, it stopped. 
Yeah. It restarted in my 40s, stopped and restarted in my 50s. <laughs> so well, it's it's, it's, it's all a stop for me, and I went into the fixed models. You know, I've got two cabinet floors with the buses, especially because when my dad being a coach driver, I wanted I, I like buses, so I collected yeah. the bus from the northeast. Right. Um, then the port works came out, and I was getting us back into plastic modeling again. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm sort of learning. I'm going more into detail in what because when you want a kit, you build it, and that was it, and hung it on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. You didn't now. I'm looking at going into doing weathering and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I've not I've not got to that part yet of weathering because I think I, I did a I did a Yunkers uh, Ju fifty two. Uh, I put that on my channel uh, about a week or so ago, and I was pretty chuffed with that. But it's a big plane. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to tackle something that big, whether it, it's just because I might ruin it, actually. So I might do a small one and start from the, you know, because I've only just started airbrushing um, in the last couple of months. I've only done two aircraft of airbrushing. The rest have always been hand painted, you know. Uh, so. well, I'm, I'm hand painting. I have airbrushed before. When when I built the Millennium Fork, then I've done some airbrushing. But because I moved from a house to a flat, I got rid of all the airbrushing stuff. Yeah, and now they're bringing out this. I've seen these mini ones with the with the the compressor with the airbrush on. Yeah, yeah. I may, there's a I may look at one of them. This is so because I don't have the room in here, and one of them seems to be just yeah, I. That's mine. I had one like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember how much it were, but it weren't. Oh, it was under hundred quid, I think. I saw because I know um, you can get like cheaper versions of like them and they might not be necessarily as good quality. But um, I did, I think it was a YouTube video I watched, and you can actually polish polish the needle even more and you get really good results. Yeah, yeah. But I've, I've often seen their brushing and thinking. I would love to give that a go. It just looks so satisfying, but I bet it's not as easy as, as it looks. There's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of mixing and there's a lot of cleanup. There is. There's a, yeah, you think about it, you do you do one colour and you don't do much coverage. There's a hell of a lot more cleaning than there is spraying. You know, I yeah. Guess that. But it is vital. Otherwise it, it uh well it just gets messy otherwise, you know. It just cocks it up and then you don't want to sand anything down because I did, I did, I think it was on the mosquito. I actually did, and I hadn't realized when I'd sprayed it and it weren't smooth. And it was only one particular color, and I hadn't put enough thinners in. And I think I'd done I, I, the pressure was too high, so it came. It, I mean, it looks perfectly all right from you know, even a foot away from it, but you look, you look right close up to it, and you can see it's not a, it's not a smooth uh, finish. Um, but that's the first one I did. So mm -hmm. I realised what I'd done wrong. Uh, and then the next colour I put on it were perfectly all right. You know, so it's just about, I suppose, uh, watching what you're doing with your mistakes and learning by your mistakes, really. The Yunkers I was really chuffed with. That's got three colours on it. Well, on the upper parts of it. And the camouflage was really difficult. I've seen some that they've got hard edges and some with soft edges for the camo. Um, and the hard edges look fine, um, especially with airbrushing because it's so flat and smooth, uh, and it does look really good. But when I showed the, when I showed it to the wife, I said, "Which one do you like? Do you like this one or this one?" And she chose the soft edge one. She says it looks better. It looks as though it's they're all like mixing in together better, and it looks it looks a better camouflage. Whereas the other one, it just looked manufactured. Um, right. Even though it did look good, so I just stuck with the soft edge one. But then I had a lot of problems with overspray, so then I had to start messing about with the pressure uh, um, and thinners, making sure it weren't too thin as well. Because at one point I don't, it had it had run, and the panels on this plane it's got lots of little grooves on it, so it hit round and went underneath. So you have all them kind of uh, issues that you can face, but it's just practice, you know. Um, <laughs> Well, I was, looking, I was looking at something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen something like that. Well, that, that, was, that one's from America. That's 88 pounds. So right. Cheap out Chinese models, but that's... 
Mm. And it's um, some of them are just the same, the double action, but they're not. Some of them you just press a button and it's when you turn it on, the air comes out. Yeah. But then you just pull back on a thingy. That one yeah. is actually double action where you press the button down for air and pull back for. Yeah. 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 That's what that's what mine does. Uh, it, took me, it took me about two minutes for it that out. I'm pressing it down and thinking, why is there no paint coming out? Why is it just uh, coming out? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'd it like was... to have a go, but... It's... it's, it's so... not, to be honest, it's, not, it's like anything. You practice it and it gets easier, you know. Yeah. I had a look on YouTube for uh, a tutorial and um, because I'd never used one before. I'd read the instructions... But even when you read the instructions, you know, it doesn't always sink in for whatever reason. So then you watch somebody doing, you go, oh, right, yeah, yeah. And you can mimic what they're doing, and it works out fine. It might not work as good as them, but it's just patience and practice. That's so, what I so do you reckon hard brushing when you're doing camouflage is better than the airbrush? Uh, no, no, I think the airbrushing is much better for camouflage. Well, for this one, anyway, this Yonkers. Let me see if I can grab it. Um, the... Um, the mosquito I did, I actually <laughs> varnished it. And uh oh, yeah, like it. Oh, let me go on full uh, screen, show show that off. I don't know that that's but you can what is it for? Oh, wow, yeah. Well, yep. Yeah. There is three different colours though, it's not focusing me damn camera now. Sorry about that. I, I, I have problems with this camera at times, I have to unplug it and plug it back in, but um, I thought it would be a side view. There you go. That looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty. I mean, since it's only my second one, I'm pretty chuffed with it, to be honest. And that's all airbrush, is it? Yeah, it's all airbrush, that one. Mm -hmm. Um, you when I showed it, when I showed it, it you're thinking me. of doing airbrushing, aren't you, Mark? Mm, yeah. You're thinking of airbrushing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, when I showed it, Showed at my daughter, she said, Oh, it looks good that you're painting, Dad. I said, But your decals are awful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said to her, I said, I knew I should have painted them. <laughs> <laughs> what you what can you do? You get them supplied with you know with plain, so um usually yeah, yeah, the decal fix makes it um the decals go in better. I usually I, to be honest, I, I've used decal fix, I use it on that, but the, the larger ones, oh they were a nightmare. You know, he's I, I were using decal fix, and then I went, I just resorted back to water. Uh, as soon as I got them in position, I left them. Well, I've got I've some decal fix, I've never used it before because it's always been water for me. So, right. when it comes to this, is hand painted, right? So, when it comes to putting this, I'm going to try the decal fix, yeah. This one, yeah. all hand painted, looks good, looks very good, yeah. Yeah, the only problem I had with decal fix is it seemed to want to fix the decal straight away <laughs> before you've positioned it. So then slap a lot of more water on it and then I well, the was gonna, it afterwards. So I was try, the way I was going to try it, and I don't know if it's the right way or not, I was going to use the water to get the, the decal on and in place. Yeah. Then yeah. put the fix over the top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, that'll, let it, hopefully that'll get it to sink into the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's I, mean, I mean, I've not got any experience with decals, and that's what I'm obviously I'm doing that plastic model kit, the mini, and I'm just sweating about it because I've never done it before and I want it to look as good as possible. So I've started painting. But can you not like on the decals, can you not like use some of the backing from it and then just sort of practice on a I don't know, on another inside of something or just it, to it, see yeah, where the, where the decal is concerned, you keep the backing on it, you soak it, obviously, and then when you take it out of the water, it, obviously you're making sure it moves. What I what I tend to do, or try to do, is use the backing paper, line it up, and then slip it on off the backing paper. Don't take it fully off the backing paper. You know, do it like a, a, do it like a transfer with the backing paper in your hand and slide it off with your finger on, you know, and then put plenty of water on it. Um, the small ones are easy. It's the larger ones I used, I, I got a problem with, um, especially with this, because the, the surface wasn't smooth. The smoother the surface, the easier it is. Do you have a, 
Did you have a gloss coat on before you put the decals on? No, no. I reckon that's the best way. It sticks better the gloss coat than the hair. Because that's what we plan on this is next, is put a put the gloss coat on. Mm. Wait till it dries, then put the decals on. Yeah. Put another gloss coat on so that I can yeah. do the weather in. Yeah. Then I finish it off with a matte coat. Yeah. Yeah. To, to yeah. bring the take the shine off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll say the decals fit better to a um, gloss coat than yeah. straight up with the paint. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I've used the same paints with the mosquito. I didn't have a problem with that one. Uh, again, them get it. Well, it's a, um, I think it was like the, the D Day landing stripes. They were a little bit awkward. Well, this Yonkers, it wasn't, it was a mer, it really was. But they all, they all look all right. They're all in the right place and everything. And it just took a lot longer than I expected it to. Well, see, that's me experimental playing because, as I say, I've been out of plastic bonded for a long time. Yeah. And if I get that, co if I get that complete all okay, that's me next. Oh, right. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I, I, I noticed this the other week. Yeah. yeah. Is that the 172? Yeah. 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 That's me next, sort of. I know I've been after I've been after a Hawker Hurricane, um, and I got one on. Oh, I, I went to buy it off uh, Amazon, and then three days later, they uh, messaged me saying it sold out; it's not available. Well, um, right. I can't seem to find one anywhere at the moment. So, but I have got a Heinkel. What um, are you working with? Just a certain scale? Because I'm just sticking with one seven two at the moment. Well, I've been mixing it actually. I've got. Um, I've got a 148, a 132, and a 172. Um, it's whatever that whatever's available at the time, really. You know, uh, you, you, I mean, these part works are great. I just get this iron clamp. These part works are great, but you need something else to fill the time. Yeah, that's a 172, which uh, I'm going to be doing. The Hankel was uh, Hankel Hankel grief. Another German plane. Well, I've had that, um, I don't know, about six months now, I think. I'll get around to it. I'm tending to stick the 172 for space to put them somewhere. I know there's so many builds out there and, you know, you've got, I mean, I'm doing this, I don't even know we're going to put the Spitfire yet, really. Um you know, and I do want to do another build, and I was looking at the Bismarck, and that's too too big, way too big. I've done the bus, the Route Master, so that's yeah. got its place, and it's just I don't know where I'm going to put everything. I know. I know. Well, I'd, like, I'd like to see the Eddie Stubb one wagon come out. Yeah, that's going to be huge, isn't it? It's going to be longer than the bus as well. Because I've got this cabinet's got Eddie Stubb odd wagons in. I don't, but that's, you know, I suppose it depends how popular it is, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it'd probably be popular here, but maybe not in Europe, I don't know, or the US. Well, there's a lot of people, aren't there, that actually hunt for them and write down the names and the numbers of the Stobarts. And yeah, I think that it appeals to a lot of them. I reckon, you know, I do think they'd be, it'll be a really successful build, like, especially with all those people that are, you know, spotting them and. Well, if they release it, I think they. I think if they release it, they'll expect it to be popular, won't they? Mm. Because they usually do the groundwork beforehand, don't they? So, and they've stuck it to an old one, sort of around about the same era as a root monster. So it's something that will go with a root monster. Yeah, yeah. two vehicles that would be a, on a road at the same thing. Well, we know root master was very popular because they're gory bringing it out again, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah. that's going to be interesting you know, because the. I think the base price is usually about 1150 quid. That's for the 12 month subscription. Um, and then you have a two year one. And sometimes they'll do an accelerated one. Um, they did that with the Shelby Cobra uh, because I, I started doing that uh, last year. I've only got three more packs to do with this one. Um, oops, uh, Oh wow! There's Miss Shelby. I oh, dragged that back. Never got wrong with. That's after pack nine, and I've not even got the uh, steering wheel connected yet. <laughs> but it's nice. fucking good. But they're twelve month subscriptions, 
um, usually about 100 quid a month. Um, so they'll do that with a route master, but they do a two year one as well. Um, so that that works out about 55 quid a month, and then you get a delivery every two months. Um, that's if they're going to do stick to it like that, they might not do, you just don't know yet. Yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm still wondering if, um, they say he's going to give in and do another route master. I mean, I, I don't think he is, but I'm still, I'm still waiting. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. If you did, what colour do you think you would do another one? Oh, I don't know. I don't green know. Lake? The London Green Lane ones? He's got three, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. ones they are. He's done yeah. such a good job with the paint. Um, I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, he's the amount done. of time and patience he's had to do. I mean, you know, it was hard enough building one, but let alone three. Yeah. yeah. And, and changing it. I'm changing the colour of two. One of the yeah. that should, we could, should be a colour, and the other one into the whole colours. Yeah. And I know he had a bit of a struggle with it because of the weather. Because obviously, when painting, he, because he was using the spray paints, and um, he had to have the perfect weather conditions to, to paint it. Otherwise, you know, if it's too damp, it's going to bubble or whatever, or get moisture in. If it's too hot, then I don't know. Maybe a blister. So he said, uh, you know. A bit of a time with it, but they're an amazing job. They look, I could just look at them all day. I really could. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think he will do another one because it's got a lot of other projects on the go. But I don't know. I, part of me still thinks I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Oh, <laughs> I might have signed up for another room master. It just wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> if he did. No, no. So, um, do you have a spray station, Dave? When you do your spread? Well, for the airbrushing, yeah, yeah, I've got a ventilator box and um, let me show you. Let's see. There you go. I've turned it around because I, I rest my magazines on it. <laughs> oh, it's okay, got, yeah. it, it, it lights up and everything. There we go. Oh, something, something you need to get that paint out of the. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, does, it does get a little bit. Um, oh yeah. wow! I've yeah. just seen how you've got your pla your um, planes. They, they're hanging off the ceiling. The planes, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. I got a glimpse. I saw it. It's amazing. Nice little proper little uh, man cave. That I'd love something like that. Oh, look, there you go. Amazing. Yeah, look yeah. at that. The P fifty one, the Mustang, and the Lancaster bomber. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know what wife thinks I'm spoilt because <laughs> <laughs> I've got my own little room, <laughs> but it's yeah. great sat in here now yeah. that I've finished, now that I've finished work because you watch all your YouTube videos and uh, do whatever I want, yeah. You know? no, that's it, yeah. I'd love my own man here myself. I'm in a two bedroom flat, my son's got a bedroom, and uh, I'm stuck in the corner of the kit of the sitting room. Oh, I, I love my, my little room. Yeah, it's just... I mean, I, I, you know, back in the day when I started YouTube, I did have a little room and I had the the bookshelf by me with everything on, and it was it was a nice room, but obviously not there now. So yeah, now I'm struggling to find room, but I've got a nice room here. And back in the day, I had a, I had a big four bedroom house, but once all the lads moved, once all my sons moved out, I couldn't afford the rent to keep it going, so I had to downgrade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I know I'm lucky. <laughs> the wife's even <laughs> let me put one or two in the lounge, so uh, I've got room for uh, one or two more builds up here. Uh, well, I thought, I thought, well, that's it. I'm not going to build any more models, and so I'm, we moved into the flat. Then all of a sudden, the root master came out. Yeah, well, there you uh, go. That's, that's, isn't it? I've got to start again, and the bugs got back into us again. I know want to keep building. Well, well, that's it. You know you. You think sometimes that well, I've got how I many builds I've got four builds on go now, and obviously I can do the the plastic kits as well, mm -hmm. and I'm waiting for the next one because the Shelby's only got three months ago, um, so I'm going to start the zero off Agora probably I'll probably get that in September, knowing their delivery dates. Mm -hmm. um, I may have to put a shelving unit up with me a lot shed and put the we'll put the models in there. <laughs> 
You can get some fucking garden sheds these days, can't you? Yeah. yeah but I've got a massive shed due to the allotment. Yeah. All I've got to do is all I've got to do is make sure that it's fully waterproof and put some shelving up and I can put the bottles doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody that's breaks what, in. That's what you need, Horlick. You need a shed at the bottom of the garden. There is one, but it's not it's not in mean, the great it's a bit full at the minute with bits, but yeah, maybe I should just rent a garage somewhere. <laughs> And then get BT out to put a phone line in there for me for the internet. And they'll be like, oh, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about me. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's all right. I, I need to sort the thing, the thing is, this desk is ideal for my computer and everything, but it's not big enough for big models. And all right, I managed to do the root master on here just about, but. I don't know. I just need a better setup. It's not going to happen at the moment. I mean, I'm hoping for the Hogwarts Express to come out. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think I'd enjoy that. But again, that we don't know what's happening with, like the slow bar. Yeah. So. I know it's just waiting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like they they did that. Um, they're still advertising that Diagon Alley, um, and that looks tempting. It's not very big, but it's something I would do. Mm. Um, and I know it to be usually popular, like the Hogwarts Express, but they're not released it yet, and I just I just can't understand why. Mm. You know, maybe it's a licensing issue, I don't know. But it's a it's a I think it's a probably be as as big a build or as popular as the DeLorean, because that's been going for uh, yonks now, hasn't it? You know, mm. I know Mark has problems getting some of the uh um issues, don't you? Are you up to 41 and you've got I've got they sent me issues in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, well, there was somebody else on Facebook exactly the same as you. Mm. You know, and he said exactly the same. Um, but you know, I that's think that happened to me actually. It... My current build, when I was building it at the same time, they they sent me like four issues ahead of what I needed. And I'm like, you sent me the wrong issue. Oh, yeah, they were out of stock, so we sent you them, and then you'll get them. I can't something like that. Yeah. Well, for me, in one way it was good, but in another way it was bad. So the bad was, obviously, if I can't build after 41, yeah. but another way it was good, because I got the circuit board. Mm. Right, right. And they're going on eBay for like 60, 70 quid. Yeah, yeah. So It's mad, isn't it, how these – I don't know how people can do that. Like, you know, they get a mag like this one, and then you just whack it on eBay for 60 quid, and it's like, Why? I mean, I know they're hard to get hold of, and it's probably demand, but that's just, I don't know. It depends how desperate you are, doesn't it, really, I suppose. Mm. You know, if, you're that, if you've got that kind of money, you're going to spend it on eBay and pay that for one issue, then more fool you, to be honest, because I won't, I won't go anywhere yeah. near it. You know. well, that's my feature desk set up. Oh, that looks brilliant. Have you changed your mind? Yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit more... Bit more expensive. I've measured it to fit the corner where I want it. But that, yeah. as Dave said, that other one was twenty quid. It looked a bit flimsy. This is fifty-five. Yeah. I want something that's gonna last this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's good. That fifty-five. And fit, quid, it uh -huh. And it'll fit this corner. No bother. Get rid of this. Yeah. This one I've got just five of its. Well, yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. I think I'm gonna be having a um, another change around. Um, it's getting a bit scruffy in here now, a bit untidy a little bit. Um, and this this sector one because it's in two parts, it's like I don't know where I'm going to put it really. I'm hoping the Hogwarts Express was going to put there and the diagonal. I, um, I store my frame on top of the uh, lower section of the Ecto one, yeah. I, I, don't I, know I have had it there before, but I just don't want to. Yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to go yeah. through the chat because there's a lot coming. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. There might be some questions for John. Yeah, so um, we've got Harlix. That's a link to John's YouTube channel. You did that, yeah. Harlix, and you didn't even know you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, so uh, check out John's uh, model making. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant channel. And, yeah, so, um, yeah, now you know. John, if you haven't seen him or heard of him before. So, um, yeah, go and check him out. Check out his YouTube. And, uh, yeah, he's got some good builds on there. 
Okay, okay. Uh, we've got P40F20, Jolly Good Show, Eagle Squadron, off to debrief now, lads. T and Caramel Wafers is in the mess for after. Yeah. Um, I've gone off on Caramel Wafers, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on digestives now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Bassett says World of Wayne is going to build the Root Master when it's released by Agora in the autumn. Yeah, because I know Wayne wanted to do that in the end, didn't he? Yeah. D. Harris says Bismarck, my best value for money when it's done, back to Airfix builds for a while. Oh. And I've got D. Harris again. Hall, it's good stream, mate. What about an Airfix build when T800 and X? An X Wing done, same model for you all, and have a build off. Well, yeah, I mean, we 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 were thinking about well a long time ago, weren't we? But I'm doing, I am, I've started a mini now, so um, I'm doing a mm. mini Cooper. Um, it's my first plastic model kit. Basically, I did a model kit a long time ago. It was a ship, and it was a very old. It was like a Victorian thing. It was <laughs> so old that the box had gone yellow and I don't know whether the plastic had done something funny, but I tried about eight glues on it and it was not sticking together at all. And I gave up with it. So this is my first uh, plastic model kit. Okay. So which we're doing on the Northern on the Northern Modelers group. Okay. P forty twenty says you've got it right, Georgie Dave. The best decal solutions are micro set and micro sol. Uh, also, P4220 says you need to put the decals on a glossy surface. Mm -hmm. DS models and vintage. We know who this is now. Yeah. So this is Dave's hobbies. He's changed his name. Uh, and it's fabulous show. Really enjoyable watching. John, what scale is your Lancaster, please? Yeah, it's a 172. The same as the ankle, so they can have a little battle. And then we've got Jay's channel, which is previously Fleetwood Jay. Uh, just hoping my new build, the Citroen 2CV, be here soon. Can't wait. I have the Wooden War of the World's Fighting Machine coming uh, also. Just freshening my channel up with a new look in there. Oh, so yeah, I've just seen your new, um, actually, your new uh, little icon. That's really good. And actually, I've got a thank you to say to Fleetwood Jay for sending me that. Oh. Uh, Nice. Well, yeah. Oh, the War of the Worlds. Yeah. 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 The CD. Yes. I've got that. I've got that one. I've got that version on vinyl. And I've I used to have it. I used to have it on vinyl. Yeah. I've got the vinyl version, the CD, and I've got the new, the um, the new edition one as well. Um, and I actually, I wasn't sure about it to start with. I do like the old one. But the new one's actually all right. I quite like the new version as well, the new generation one. I'll have to look for that one. <laughs> that old CD, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's basically exactly the same, just obviously a different narrator, and um, it's uh, got a few more technical techno bits in it. But it is, I don't think it ruins it. But then it depends on, you know, what you like. I'm going to admit I liked the vinyl version of best, but I lost all my vinyl when I had a house fire. <laughs> Jana. Yeah. <laughs> Say no more. All right. <laughs> Jana, can just, Jana can just look at something and it sets on fire. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tell him a lot when he's not going to have fires. <laughs> oh, oh dear. But no, well, well, I suppose I better think about ending the show because it's been on an hour and a half. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I will be, as I said, I will be back on on Fridays from now. So I'll be next on next Friday. Um, so, yeah, let's go round and uh, say goodbyes. And thank you again, John Swanamaker, for joining us tonight. It's been really interesting and great to see what you've been up to. And, um, yeah, so let's uh, go through. So I'm going to say goodbye to Mark's Mods to start with. Ooh. Right. Uh, good night for me. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Thanks to everybody that's been in the chat. And uh, I'll see you next time. Lovely. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for the help tonight. Um, we've got uh, Jordy Dave. Uh, okay, thanks for having us on again, Holix. Um, two cracking balls a night. I hope everybody enjoyed them. And, and it was great having John on for the, for the chat there. So um, 
don't forget thumbs up and subscribe to everybody on here and the people in the chat yeah lovely thank you and uh yeah again john's one making thank you so much for joining us tonight really appreciate it thanks for having me guys great interesting chat we've had tonight great yeah. show as well i'll uh, really keep watching fun. you especially uh, well i keep watching your live shows anyway and uh, i'll catch up those i don't but thanks for having me on and um cheers for the uh, thumbs up no lovely thank you and um uh, yeah as i say if you haven't seen uh john's one making the link is in the chat uh but uh search for him on youtube and uh yeah he's got some great builds on there so um yeah head over to him as well and have a look and subscribe like and yeah uh, apart from that i will see you all next friday um so yeah have a good evening everyone and uh see you next week bye bye bye, bye. Sometimes and I can't seem to find a light Between the walls I built for myself right in my mind And then you came over and you showed me love that I never had seen before and now when I got you it's all gonna be alright Thinking about all the things we did tonight What a time to be alive Just you and I you and I